afternoon and good evening and thank you for tuning in to another edition of the divination table i'm your host michael lennon and tonight's special guest comes from a long lineage of well-known psychics seers and mystics she's used her inherent abilities to study lenormand for over the past three decades Raina George leads regular workshops and study groups, and she was also a main presenter at TarotCon in 2012 as well as a few others also consulted on the design of several Lenormand decks and published several articles on cardomancy. She's also the writer of the Essential Lenormand book and the Raina George Lenormand deck. Let me reach out to our special guest and bring on Raina George. Good evening, my beautiful, wonderful Raina George. How are you? Good, 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 good. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. So am I. And, you know, I have to giggle and I have to share this because okay. for like an hour before the show, or I should say two hours, I felt oh, like I was getting ready for a date. <laughs> and I sent you a message and said, hey, I just want to, you know, let you know, I'll reach out to you and let you know, just remind, you know, just a reminder that this is an audio only show. And then she messaged me and she goes, wait a minute, what? It's just audio. I just put on all my makeup. <laughs> I know. And, and I, I realized right at that moment why I felt like I was getting ready for a date. <laughs> <laughs> So it is so beautiful, wonderful to have you here. You know, I've been I've been excited. I've been waiting to get you up onto the show for a long time, and I know you've been busy. You know, yeah. So I know you just got back from Reader Studio, Reader Studio, New York. And how was that? I mean, I know you set up this year for the first time with a booth. Yes, 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 yes. It was actually amazing. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Everybody was amazing. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It was it was it was super cool. I heard yeah, from a few before, sources before, before, before that, the that I was um the door, I was they in saw Egypt. you or felt you. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, said, I heard from a couple of sources like the minute you walked through the door, it's like everybody felt you and they like turned around. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand um, that you had a beautiful time though. Say that again. I I understand you had a beautiful time. Yes, yes. It was. It's been really, really, really busy. Like, um, but it's cool. It's 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 good busy. It's it's really good busy. Like from the beginning of the year, 
um, first I was in China doing the readings and the classes and everything, and then went to Portland, and then went to um, Egypt, and then went to New York. So I just like I'm trying like to. You know, right now, um, Un unwind. <laughs> yes, I just want to sit and just like be home for a few months. But it's been awesome. It's been actually awesome. A, a big roller coaster. It's beautiful. I love teaching. I love how my students. I love everybody's loving the Le Normand and and just really taking it and flying with it. Um, I think this is just amazing. I have to agree. I mean, you're an amazing person. You know, I own your cards. I own your book. You know, I reference them constantly because they are one of my favorites. You know, you. now you come from a long line of well-known yeah. psychics and seers. Yes, you know, my great-grandfather was... Um uh, he was like the Edgar Casey of our uh, of of like the area in Beirut. Like, but everybody used to be like super scared of him. Um, and then I have another um, grandfather. Also, I mean, both of my my maternal ones were psychic, but one was like super Edgar Casey kind of thing, and and into alchemy. And on top of it, he was a pharmacist and a doctor. So it was a lot of that stuff with science and all that kind of stuff. And the other one was more like a a spiritual kind of very mellow down to earth. You know, everything is good. And then on the, my mater my paternal my father um he just used to see a lot of stuff and um um he was uh, actually my maiden name is like potter so <laughs> i don't know potter yeah Dude, but, that um, explains a uh, lot <laughs> i said potter that explains a lot I know, right? <laughs> and then, um, so he used to like see things. And actually, I wanna, I wanna say story. Like when of he, um, he used to do with clay. He used to do pottery. Like you know, when he was um, long time ago. <laughs> and then one time he did like um, the story. They used to tell it to me, and they used to freak, you know freak out like my aunts and everything. So he made like he did like a figure. Um, and then he went to sleep. He didn't fire it. He didn't like burn it. You know how you're supposed to like burn it and fire it and everything. So it was right. still like in clay. And then at night it just got up and walked, um, all over the, their feet and they're like freaking out. So it was just like, this is like a normal occurring in, um, <laughs> in a household and you know, so it's nothing new in my household. Yeah. So you were brought up with a lot of spirituality and a lot of divination in your blood from a very yeah. young age. Yeah. So unlike a lot yes, of but us. it wasn't uh, very uh, acceptable because around my time everybody was was dead and there was war, so everybody was worried about the war and the people that were actually that had the gift they either like left um, Beirut or they were dead or they didn't want to talk about it and people were dying left and right and it was just it was. It wasn't like a good time. I didn't, um, I mean, my mother helped me a lot. Thank God, you know, she did not put me in a crazy institution and didn't give me drugs. But, um, yeah. That's a that's a rough childhood, you know, growing up. You know, and I know that you draw upon a lot of where you're from because you can see it in your cards. You know, they have a lot of history. They have yes. a lot of symbology. And uh, I'll say... Aside from the everyday images of the regular Le Noman, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot more deepness and depth when I look at your cards because of your history. You know, yes, I, yes, I tried up. to put that like an extra just just for me, but it's <laughs> yeah. not for the readers. You just look at the symbol and that's it. But this is just you know, like it comes so you can actually feel it. Yeah, and I see that in every single card. You know, it's one of the reasons why I love them because it's not just a Lenoman deck that we've changed the images on or we've changed how the pictures look. There's little nuances, there's little symbols, you know. Every little yep. symbol tells a different particular story. 
Yes, yes. My God, yes. You're very uh, observant. Yes. Every every card has a story, like literally every card. Uh, me and Callie, Callie French was the artist. Uh, um, she is amazing. She literally, I was looking for an artist for a couple of years and she was dropped in my meeting. Um, she came to my meeting and she told me, uh, oh, look, I'm an art, you know, I um, look at my drawings and stuff. And, you know, and then she came and she showed me two examples. And the example she told, she showed me, I told her I'm looking for an artist, was the fish card, which is I pulled today, actually. And the woman card, the woman that's um, not the not the one that's wearing vintage Dior. And I was just like, oh, my God, I love it. So this is how and the funny thing that we were both in Texas for a very short time. And during that short time, we saw each other, like I would say, sometime, you know, twice a week, sometime, um, you know, once a week. So just so we can like get everything because I wanted it. I, I, I was very, I wasn't easy. I was like, you know, uh, wait kind of thing, you know, to Pamela, if you know what I mean. I understand completely, you know. So she put up with me to get to, to, to make it like the way exactly. And a lot of pieces you will find in my house. A lot of pieces have everything in there has meaning. So, yeah, you know, aside from the, you know, four additional cards, which we'll get to, you mm-hmm. know, I don't know if people have asked if they understand or they know their meanings behind. But, you know, on the right hand corner of every single one of your cards, There's a number. So the number is written in both. It's written in um, Arabic and it's written in the number that we use right now, which is called Arabic too. So um, I, you know, but this is the number, the the Arabian number that's written. And the way, the reason why I did that, I did it as an homage to my first deck ever. The first deck, if you you look at my book, the first deck that was given to me, um, I have a picture of it in my book, actually. Um, when I did a research on it, it was like 1920-ish kind of secret pack, probably was brought in by, um, you know, some soldier, you know, from um, the French soldier or something. And it had, and, and on top, if you look at, it was a Dondorf deck, and on top, it had the both number. It was the numbers in Arabic, um, that is the, and then the numbers that we use right now which is called Arabic too, but they're both like the both their numbers in, in both different um, script. Do you know what I mean? So I did yes. that as an homage to that same first deck that I ever got. You know, I notice everything. So, you know, that's one of the first things I look at and not knowing Arabic, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what they were, but I thought they were numbers, you know, but looking at, you know, the, the images, symbology, the, colors you know there's particular meanings for the reason why you went with the gold accents also it's not just to make it stand out (laughs) Uh uh-huh there's a lot of richness in your culture yes because i mean i (laughs) I I love bling and I love I used to glitter my deck everybody hates me for that I know <laughs> um I stopped doing that but this is what I used to do um and when we were doing the original we were talking to US games and I want it shine I want it glitter I want it something that is different I want it something that is not done I want it I there's a vision I had and I wanted that vision and and I was trying to explain it to them as much as I can, like, I, I want something very special, very pow, very me, very, um, something that, that, that's alluring, that shines that, you know? So they tried to do the glitter and, and they, they couldn't. And then they came up with this, um, pearlized, this is the first time they've ever done it. It's like a pearlized finish, which is amazing, like under how it, how it plays. And then they did the gold in the front and the back, which is the first time they do that too. So, um, yeah, it's 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 just I because I I love I love that that stuff and plus I want to this is like this is the whole essence of of me because this is why it's called Anna George Lenormand. It's not like you know any. Do you know what I mean? Yes. That's why you can feel like you can really feel like all of it, and I want it like for you when you divine 
you divine with, um, you know, luxury and divine with that feeling of, you know, being in another world and, and just something that pulls you with, and having all this pretty stuff. You know how we put all that pretty stuff around us and we put the crystals and the, and the lights and everything. So I wanted that to have that same mood to, to pull you and, and to like, you know, have your senses go and then let, and, and, and just let it fly. So it was all like, um, kind of a setup kind of thing, you know, like, um, how you, how you set up a, um, um, uh, a stage. Right. You know, if you're staging your house or something else, but I also look at them and I look at the gold as a nod to heritage and history, you know, of Beirut, because gold is also a very powerful accent mm-hmm. in a lot of things over in that culture as well. Yes. So, That's very, 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 everything has gold. Um, how do you say it? Gold, the uh, um, the one you 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 use in the clothes, the gold gold threading, gold uh, stuff. They used to love everything. You you'll see that a lot, a lot. Like for example, the man, what he was wearing. Actually, I actually have that. What he's wearing, it was given to me when I got married as a gift from my aunt. Like as one a part of my trousseau, that whole um, thing that he's wearing with the gold. It's all gold. Um, um, Pitchery and threading. Yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah. So I mean, I look so at. I, want, I wanted everybody to feel that 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 lusciousness, that you know, sexy luscious. Do you know what I mean? This is this oh, no, is I, what I want. I, I you know I get it. <laughs> you know that's what, <laughs> I'm glad. That's so you feel bring, it. Oh yeah, that's why I bring it up because you know I pay attention and look at the small little nuances. I look at the overall design. I look at the cultural background, the symbolisms, you know, the the Hamsa hand on the front, you know. So everything for me plays a big, huge part, you know. When I look at your deck, and for me, it stands out a lot more than others because it is specifically just you. You know, and everything that has brought you to be who you are and where you've come from. You know, yes, so, but I want to like to use not not you know, it's me and and my doorways. Like, so you right. can actually use these doorways. I wanted it to be like a like like springboard, like a a, a doorway for you just to go. You know, just just blow. Yeah. See when you I, I I you know a video you can see what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I can see I my speak head. with my hands a lot. But that's okay. So, yeah. you know, we come to the point where, you know, how did you come up with the idea of coming up with four additional cards? You know, okay. Because I know it's not traditional, and you know that I understand, but, you know, for our listeners. I know. I know. I was so worried that I'm going to get burned and all that kind of stuff, but I really want it. So this is the story. Um, the main, main, main reason I wanted an extra card is for the two cards, the spirit and the incense burner. This is the main reason. Actually, actually, the actual main one is the spirit one. Because since I was um, very young, when I started reading around 11 and stuff, by the time I was 16, every time I do the reading, I'm like, I need a card for spirit. I need a card because I see I'm a medium. I see entities. I see spirits. I see all that kind of stuff. I I need a card that just tells me something about, you know, um, the spirit card. So, like, I I needed a spirit card. I needed, um, it just... Every time it never fails, and I remember clearly that I wish I had that card and I would use it now. But I, I always like found another way to figure things out. But it would be nice sometime to have that card pop up. Right. And then Just the other the card that face. I actually yes, I want to go back and talk about the spirit card because I don't talk about it a lot, and there's a reason why I don't talk about it a lot. Okay. Is actually because I wanted that card to be very personal to every um, um, person using the deck. So I don't want to set, I don't want to put any set meaning to it. I don't want to put, because I have my own things and I don't think this is how it should be. It should be like, how is it playing with you? How is it working with you? This is you, this is you and your, your own, um, spiritual, um, journey on, on, you know, so where are you in your journey? What, what are you doing in your journey? So this spirit card can mean to you, um, 
a destiny. It can mean to your fate. It can mean to you like the major arcana. A lot of, I have a lot of my students, there's, there, it's coming to them. It's like when the major arcana comes, you know, like something is going to happen or, or the message is coming strong. Like this is, this is it. This has to happen. This is coming from the top. Um, but, um, I have, I have other, I have other that are actually using it like in mediumship. This is how I use it when actually spirit comes and talks. Um, so That's there's many it. different way of using that card. And this yeah, is why I didn't want to put it in a, in a, how do you say it? In, in a tower and, in, in a, I, I didn't want to put rules or anything on that card, especially this card. It has to be so personal and I want it the people to actually work with it by themselves. And if they feel they, they want to work with it, they work with it. If they feel they don't want to work with it, they, I, you know, don't, you know, so please don't. Um, this is why I wanted it very personal. I want it very, um, the, the funny also, this card, the way, um, the way she drew it, it was amazing. So me and Kelly, we had a, a very psychic connection, which is amazing. I would send her stuff psychically, but this one was the strongest because I was like, okay, so I have something that I'm seeing, but I cannot describe it. And, and I don't know. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit and meditate and I'm going to send it to you tonight. So I did that. The next like day she sends me uh, with a pencil and I was floored when she sent me the pencil drawing. I like right now I'm talking about it. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. I'm just getting goosebumps everywhere. I'm like, oh, my God, it needed to appear. It needed to come. And then it made itself show. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And and looking at the card, because you know, I've got it in my hand, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, for me, I use it as a spiritual connection as well. I use it in mediumship. I use it to represent whether it's ancestor, whether it's God or whatever divinity elf or the client is uh-huh. working with, you know, but I like how it encompasses all the elements. The, yes. The earth, the air, the fire, the water, the human soul, the connection that we have, you know, the reminder of, I always, when I look at it, it's always like, you know, remember to be on bended knee, you know, giving thanks to what God and spirit has provided you and helped bring you along your journey. Yes. You know, yes. And, and then remember also, she put that um, fog in the back that in the back to tell you that um, it's really within your reach. It's not far. It's not it's not a veil that you cannot that you have to rip through. No, it's actually closer than what you think. It's right there. It's exactly. This is why it was it was through. like um, smoke right behind it. You know that it's it's right there. You're not seeing it's like it's right there. Yeah, they're just not seeing it. And, you know, and it's a beautiful card. It's one of my favorites. Actually, that one and your incense burner are my two favorites because, for me, they have a very powerful spiritual connection together. Yes, you know, yes, Especially yes. for people that do spiritual work. Yes, know, plus cleansings. if you put them sick, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you know, so when I look at the two together, you know, it's a message from spirit, a message from God that – Maybe you need some cleansing. Maybe you need something cleaned out, you know, and depending on cards that come around it, you know, it could be you need a spiritual bath if you've got clovers or the flower, you know, all those different things that make it unique using it with the Lenormand system. Exactly. Exactly. You have to remember also the context all the time. So let's say you have a mundane, really, really mundane context. It's just like, you know, nothing spiritual, nothing that big and all that kind of stuff. And you got these two cards together, the spirit and the incense burner. Just think of it as as the way what it is. What does it look like like to you? It's like the genie giving you your your you know whatever you want. So basically, when you put them together, it's like yes, you know, it's a yes. You're, you're gonna get your wish, kind of thing. You know, I never looked at it that way, <laughs> but you know, now that I'm looking at it, that you say it, I can actually see that as the spirit car being the one coming out of the genie bottle, which actually is the incense burner. Yeah. 
and granting your wishes. Yep. Okay. Yep. So be careful what you wish for all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm so. always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the yeah, artwork so, is absolutely so. beautiful, as are the messages. You know, yeah. so how did the incense burner come out? You know, how okay. did that come up for you? So the incense burner was another card that I wanted when I was, um, you know, young. And I, I wanted, like, you know, something for clearing and cleaning and all that kind of stuff. And the evil eye at the same time. Because where I come from, we believe in the evil eye. And it's called the eye, we call it. But, you know, it just protects you from evil. It protects you from this. So for me, the incense, it protects it protects from all evil. It cleanses. It keeps um, away um, things. And actually, um, when I was... Um, when I was doing all that stuff when I was a child, like 16, teenager, not a child, um, around 16, I remember um, every time, like, my father would bring me, like, the, you know, the eye, and I would wear it. It's just like a glass eye, like, and a heart. I never forgot. And I would wear it, and then something, you know, like, a few days, and it would crack in the middle. When it cracks in the middle, that means it, it just, it worked, and it did a lot. So right. he gets me another one, and then I wear it, and then it cracks in the middle. Then he gets me another one, and, it cra- and then at the end, he goes, he's like, here you go. He got me a whole box. <laughs> you know, he's like, go through these. Let me see how long it's going to take. And then, um, so that's why for me, that was like, <laughs> to have that eye of, protection you know they they call it here the evil eye is very important um especially in my culture like okay there is actually some and for okay so for here to explain the evil eye is so we have energies everything is made of energy and you have aura and you have these um vortexes that are that are your chakras and everything so when somebody sends you like an intention like a a, a negative thought and everything is gonna if your if your aura is not very well um balanced if i mean if your chakras are not very well balanced if your aura is already like hit and tired and all that kind of stuff so it can go through and hits your it hits your um shield kind of thing so one time after another after another it can go through your shield and then you can get sick uh, you can break something you have an accident things will happen in your life this is what i uh, believe this is how we grew up kind of thing so this is why it's very important to have that eye and i wanted it i wanted it here in my deck and um i told callie i want a very old incense burner and uh, we, you know, searched, I searched online to get the picture that, you know, I, I have that I've seen. Um, and um, this is this is how how it came up. And, you know, and I love that because, you know, it's not just in your culture, you know, with the evil eye, you know, in mm-hmm. a lot of um, Latin cultures, you know, they also tend to wear that as well. Uh, more so like the Asabache bracelets, you know, for protection for children. But I've seen a lot of people in a lot of different cultures actually referencing that evil eye, oh, that evil yeah, intention. Yeah, the, the whole Mediterranean, the whole Mediterranean era, the Phoenician, they used to have the eye on all of their boats. If you look at old Phoenician boats, you're gonna have, you're gonna see the eye on the boats. You're gonna see the eye on the boats of the Greek. You're gonna see the eye on the boats of the Egyptian because of the Phoenician. Um, so you'll see it like out of the front, you know, like a big eye kind of thing. Right. And I love the fact that it's behind the incense burner. You know, the incense is clearing everything away. The evil eye. Exactly. Yeah, it's taking you know. away the, anything that's coming at you. And it's a beautiful image. I love that incense burner. You know, I actually thought initially it was like hand drawn until you just mentioned it yeah she she did it's all hand drawn the whole deck is hand drawn she is a very good uh painter she's very 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 good i'm not going to disagree with that at all because you know i love your cards you know i'm one of your biggest fans (laughs) thank you thank you thank you thank you i mean she took the picture and then she did her own kind of um her own take on it you know what i mean yes you know, and it's interesting that it's got, you know, the crescent moon and the star on the top of it. You know, the attention to detail and how the smoke rises yep. and floats and travels in different directions. You know, because it's also for me when I look at it, you know, 
messages going to God, messages going to spirit, because in a lot of cultures also, you know, we use incense to help carry our prayers. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Not only that, you use incense. In my culture also you use incense to say thank you, to say thank you to the um, spirits that are with you. You know, you're never alone. To say thank you to the dweller of the home, to say thank you to any kind of work you just – and they like like the expensive incense and, you know, the more Mm – it's something about the smell. Something about the sense of smell is so important in between our world and the other worlds. Yes, because, you know, smoke and incense and smell permeate, you know, all realms. You know, it's not something physical per se. It's something that can weave in between the different layers and reach the different areas in all different, you know, planes of existence. You know, Imagine like when you, put, when, when you put, um, I got with me, um, like the old incense and it, it's like from the tree and, and I would have people smell it in, in, um, in New York. And at one point uh, it, they would just go, <gasps> you know, it would, it would be like, um, like, like, like at one point I had that one last jar and I was using that jar every time I'm, I'm getting like overwhelmed. Every time I'm getting tired, I just open it up and I go, and it just makes me like, oh, it makes me good. I feel good. I'm grounded, everything. And then the funny thing, I had um, this this one person, Veronica, I love her so much. And when she got it and she would come back and tell me, here, smell a little bit, smell a little bit. It's just so, I mean, what does... What does incense and the smell, what, what, you know, the stuff that it does to the mind and the senses, it just, it just makes you wonder, makes you dream. It seduces all your sentence, you know, uh, senses, senses. But you always have to remember your context when you're reading. Always, yes. always, always. I have to say that like until the day I die, I think. Well, I mean, it's important, you know, especially for like new readers, you know. It all boils down to context and what your question is as to how you're going to look and read the cards. You know, you can't not really ask a question and throw the cards and get a detailed, accurate answer. Very good. Very correct. You know, your spirits, your guides, whoever it is you work with, your ancestors, you know, as well as the spirit of your deck. Hey, what's going to happen? If I take this job and then formulate your answer according to the cards that fall and lay down. Exactly. So if you get the spirit card, you know, if you get the incense card, this is actually, it, it's a, it's pleasant because what is the incense, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's very, your way is uh, clear. it's going to be calm. It's going to be a pleasant environment. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, the you way know, it's, it's clear very... for you, it's open, you know, yes, it's a protected yes. way for you to move, you know. Yep. And and all of these things, you know, as a new reader, when you're going through, you know, any system, you know, of course, you know, learn your fundamental basics and your fundamental meanings of your cards. But remember, it all comes down to your questions. You can't think of it just as like, well, my intent is this. You really need to put together a well thought out question to ask the Lenormans to get a well thought out answer back. Exactly. Half of the all reading is the question. Half of it. This is all I always teach. It. it is so important how you ask the question and what are you saying in your mind? What is in your mind while you're shuffling? This is so, so important. I can't stress that enough because if it's a little bit, this is why, this is why doing all these reading online, I mean, in, um, in the groups, when people are throwing cards and they say, well, I'm, I threw these cards and I did this and, and um, you know, well, they're not right. They're not working correctly. Um, and people like answer them. Well, it's, it means this, it means this, it means this. We're all answering this person, but we really don't know what was going on in that person's head while he or she threw these cards? So if you are thinking about a question with your boyfriend and you just had a fight with your mom and you're, you know, you're, you're, you have like that fight in the back of your head, but at the same time you're asking, okay, so how, what's going to happen with my boyfriend? 
the everything is going to get jumbled up. It's not. This is not going to work. This is why we see a lot of things veering off and people saying, oh my God, it's not working and, and all that kind of stuff. And people can answer you wrongly. This, your state of mind, your state of mind is the number one, number one uh, priority while doing any type of divination. Yes, and I will agree with that 100%. Because when you are not in your right state of mind, you're basically like a babble to spirit. They don't yep. know which direction you're going, which answer you want. If your question is just one, if there's like 50, and of course, if there's 50, you can't really get 50 answers in one little spread. You know, so take the time to center, you know, clear your mind of thought. If you're distraught, distressed, if you're angry or upset, put them down and walk away. Yeah. Or simply ask somebody else, hey, I'm going through something with my boyfriend. Could you pull some cards to see how things are going to turn out? That's actually a better way than doing it yourself when you are not in a state of mind to put together a real train of thought in one direction with nothing exactly. else interfering. Yep, yep. I um, I do that with my son. I said, you know, if, if I'm just going, ah, you know, and I go, ah, a lot. I'm like, please, you, you just, can you just pull, car, you know, a few cards and just, just tell me what, what you see. Just focus on that question and tell me what you see. And because um, I'm like, I, I just, I don't want to deal with it. You know, I mean, I can sit down and clear my mind. I've done it. I always do that. Um, for clients, this is my main priority. I do that. You know, it takes a lot of energy, everything. Yes. But if, if it's something personal, I'm just like, you know, ah, I'm not going to do this. Just I want it fast. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't actually ask questions for myself because one, I don't want to know the answer Two, I'm a Scorpio. We like mm -hmm. to over process, over analyze. We like to think over and over. And for me, it's not good. I'd rather sit there and say, hey, can you pull some cards for me? And, and even then, I don't like to really ask because I don't know if I want to know the answer. But I'd rather somebody else pull the cards so it's clear because I'll just overwork everything. Oh, no, I have no problem pulling the card. I don't do it a lot. I do it when I'm in the mood. But no, I have decks all over the house. And when I feel like, <laughs> hmm, you know, I usually know I get like sense of feeling and I pull the card just to affirm my vision. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like I would see like something and I just want to make sure because, you know, I'm, you know, even after all these years, there's still that little tiny voice saying, maybe you're just cuckoo, you know? <laughs> so I just pull a card to, to, to make sure. And then, you know, I'm, I am so enjoying my spirit card because um, it popped out not too long ago. I heard I actually, actually, when was that? Two days ago. Two days ago, yes. Um, I, I heard something. I had a dream that it's like a vision and I heard something and I heard a message and um, I just wanted to make sure. And then I got the spirit card with the bird card with the actual message that I heard that the card came up. So for me, it was just like in your face kind of thing. Like, hey, how many things I got to tell you? You know, just listen. Why don't you want to? But, you know, I'm a Gemini. So I always want, you know, are you sure? Am, am I sh <laughs> sure? Are you sure? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> how many times we got to tell you the same answer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Once wasn't enough. Okay. Especially, especially when I don't want to do it, you know, when, when it's no problem, no problem. It's when something like, oh, I have to do this. No, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it's just a dream. Maybe it's not real. Maybe I'm not, you know. So this is when I actually, when it's something that I am, I am resisting, this is where I want to make sure that are you really asking me this? <laughs> Hey, I want to take a moment to thank a few of the people that stopped into our chat room, you know, okay. before we get to the end of the show, because, you know, I tend to sometimes wait till near the end. Um, okay. So Karen from Tea with Karen um, has stopped in to say hi. She wanted to hi, in Karen. I love you and love your videos and everything. Oh, uh, she is wonderful. And, you know, she has launched her own tea card divination courses um, that I'm also co-teaching with her. You know, people can find out about that at teawithkaren.com. That's K-A-R-I-N. 
Oh, so that officially launched this month. So I've been extremely busy as well as her. You know, um, Karen has never read for herself either, and uh, she doesn't think that she really wants to know. <laughs> It's very easy. You just have to pull. If you can't, I have a lot of people saying that they can't read for themselves. All you need to do, if if you have that problem, you need to take yourself out and use yourself like a third person kind of thing. Like you, you know, imagine like you're reading it. You're reading for a client. Yeah, I always have that issue. <laughs> I can try that the next time, but I have an yeah, issue. Yeah, sometimes when you're too out. too close. I, you be careful because sometimes you might pull the cards you want because we are that strong. Yes, I will agree with that. Hey, we also had Linda Schumacher, you know, who has joined yes, us. Yes, hi, Linda. Mwah, mwah. Love you, love you, love you. And love that you just use them. You're using the, the extra cards. <laughs> we also have Candelo Cambisa of Candelo's Corner, who is just back with its 12 o'clock somewhere on Spreaker. You know, one of the longest running radio shows on the internet. We have a Lina Peter Albert. Yes, hello. Uh, Erica Robinson has joined us as well. Hello, I love you guys all. And Keith Swift has joined us as well. Thank you so much. So, what what questions? Does anybody have any questions? Well, Karen says that Michael is the only man in the tea school. Poor guy, the rose amongst the thorns. <laughs> 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 and she says that the times I've pulled cards, I see it, and it smacks me in the face. Yeah. You know, don't if you, you love have that? Any don't you just that love are, that? You know, if you have questions and you're in the chat room, you know, please feel free to ask, you know, while we have Rana here. You know, we still have two other cards we haven't gone through as of yet. You know, so, you know, if you have questions, pop them on up. Yes. Yes. Lina would love, has said would love. hi. Who? I'm sorry? Uh, Lina Peden Albert. I'm sorry. I, I misspelled that. Yes. Hi, Lina. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Love you all. So now we can. They're all wonderful to... readers. Oh, I know. You know, Erica Robinson, I love her to death. I remember years ago, you know, rooting for her and pushing her. And, you know, I love seeing how people change and develop. And she is amazing. Yeah, she's a fabulous reader. She's a fabulous reader. I love it. And who doesn't love her? I think everybody loves her. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So Karen wants to know, Rana... Do you mm -hmm. find the moment you are laying out a GT, the mm -hmm. few, few cards give you the whole story without even laying out the rest? Or I should say the first few cards that are laid out. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Right away. It's just like you feel like, wow, okay, I know exactly what this is going on, what, was, what this is going to be. But, you know, we lay it out, you lay it out and then you get more detail and more detail and more detail. And you're like, uh huh. So, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I got to start doing the GT one these days because, you know, I'm a Scorpio. And, you know, I don't like, you know, like yes or no's. I like the nitty gritty. I need to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, GT is amazing. It's amazing. It just tells you everything, everything, everything. So, you know, Erica has now become a co-host on a podcast called The Third Eye Unplugged. Oh, I love that name. So, you know, they talk about different things, spirituality, you know, different mystical things. You know, they inject a little bit of humor. You know, people can find them also on the third eye dot com. That's the number three RD. Um, but, you know, I was so happy when she told me about that. I was just like, hoo hoo. <laughs> That's nice. That sounds I love that name. I did, too. You know, I'm sitting there going, hmm, the third eye unplugged. And all I yeah. is a divination table. <laughs> <laughs> um, Karen also wanted to know, do you also draw some cards prior to a client arriving to forecast what their main message is? Or do you just wait? No, 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 no. I don't, uh, I, I don't, uh, no, 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 no. I do everything. I like to connect with my client. 
um, because see, <clears throat> I've had many uh, experiences while sometime like you're not really connect. It's very important that I actually con- connect with my client. So when my client comes, sometimes I would draw like a one card just to see how is the reading, but not what it is to expect or, or like, not what am I supposed to give to them? You know what I mean? Like, I want to see, like, is it going to be a problem? Is it going to be heavy? You know, you know, sometime, let's say right before they come and I get the snake, I'm like, oof, okay, let me put extra protection. Let me put extra, you know, uh, incense. Let me put extra, um, I, I up, I up my, um, my, um, how do you call these, um, crystals and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, some other time will be like just, um, you know, the sun. I'm like, okay, that's going to be amazing, you know. So uh, I will just pull it for me sometimes, but it's very, very rarely. Um, um, and sometimes it could be like one time I, I remember like doing an interview with somebody online and I just like, oh, how's the interview going to be? And I got, this is like a few years back and I got the snake and I'm like, oh no, you know. So I thought like, something bad's going to happen. And, but it was like the wires, the wires weren't working. We had problems with the wires, something with the, so it was just like, but then as soon as we got this fixed, everything was amazing. So. So you like to go in without having any preconceived yeah. notions. And normally yes, that's yes. what I do myself. You know, yes. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to hear anything. Don't ask me yep. questions. Tell me nothing, you know, just it's show It's much up, better. You go down. clean and you just get so much information and you're not using you. Right. And that's how I do it. I know other people will sometimes, you know, if they get a feeling, well, let me pull some cards and see what this client might be coming in for. See, thought, thought, in divination, what I what I have discovered, you really need to keep yourself away while you're doing reading for somebody else, because this is not you. It's not about you. It's not about what you're thinking. When you do that, you start thinking too much. You do not want to think. You don't want to overthink. You don't want to uh, think about anything, really. You don't want to be you. You don't want your brain to be working, really. You just want to be a conduit to get the message and to give the message. And your your eyes will see the cards, will connect the cards. Your spirit will talk to the eye, to the eyes. Everything is synced together, and you'll get the message and you give it out. No thinking. If you do that whole process of prepping and all that kind of stuff, is just. It's just that extra step of thinking and it puts you on a thinking mind. You don't want that. You don't, the easiest, the best divination, the best stuff to get, the best fortune telling is when you're just clean and clear and you just go at it. And I'll agree with that because, you know, then as Erica said, you know, you are just a vessel. You know, you just allow it to flow. She also said that she uses your cards when she reads on the third eye unplugged. (laughs) thank you thank you thank you you know so let's move to we'll save the good card for last um let's look at the souk the marketplace yeah you know so actually those two cards the both of them so i when i added those two um okay how do i start this let me see the when i wrote my book I just wrote my book. I did not know I was belonging to any school. I didn't even know that there are schools, okay? Mm-hmm. But when we first, the Lenormand got on the scene and everybody and all these groups and everything, um, so it, I found like, you know, there was these schools, French school, German school, Belgium school, I don't know, you know, Russian school. I, I found like, oh my God, there's all these schools. And I'm like, okay, so I tried to see, you know, where does it fit and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But then when I wrote my book, uh, my publisher say, said, no, you have to put in your book what school you follow. And I'm like, so that was a little bit of a struggle. But then I'm like, no, it has to be like, what is it that you follow? my um the editor you know right so i did the whole thing i'm like okay well i guess it's close to the french so that's why i put the french there you know that's close to the french school but i kind of it, it's just i just it's not sitting well with me you know i know it's in my book i wish i could take it out it is probably still true though you know that the because the the deck that I was given to me was um, very French and very, um, it was French and Arabic actually. And even the little tiny book was written in French and Arabic, the little white book. And, um, 
And if you go back to it, it's connected to the Philippe, um, the sheet of Philippe, which is again French. So I guess, it, you know, you can say that, but I really don't like the idea of belonging to, to, to school because this is divination. This is really, it's, it's, it's you. Right. So for me, I was using, um, I, I saw on all the groups and all the, the, Facebook and every all of everything, people fighting over two things. Like really, what what pulls all these schools separate is just two things: the sex card and the work card. Those are right. the two things that people fight over. And then everybody goes to a team and defend that other team, and this one the team defend that other team because, well, you know, the Belgium used the moon, and I understand, but at the same time, for me, I want the moon to come up because the moon is about success and it's about getting recognition. So I don't want to use it as a, my 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 um, my work card. And then there's another, you know, that uses the anchor, but I want to use the anchor. I want it like for me, the anchor tells you, okay, you're you're it's stable. And so this is why I was using the fox because the fox is very much like corporate America. It's very much, you know, he's always running around and he's always trying to get, um, how do you say from get food on the table, you know, get, you know what I mean? So that was like the main focus is always trying to do that. So this is why, and the fox, I can actually use it because if I want something, you know, um, the seat to come up, it would be the snake. So we have like another card that can come up for it. So do you know what I mean? So this is what I was using the fox. But seeing all this um, arguments, I, I was like, I just want to make a work card. And what better of a work card than actually um, where you can do all all sorts of type of work, you know, like a bazaar, a souk, uh, everything from bartering to to everything, everything you can think of work can be, you can find in a, in, in a souk, in a bazaar right. or in and a market. The, and so, the meanings behind the card, behind the souk, you know, it, it's not just, you know, a job. It's all the things that go along with it. You know, it's all the bartering. It's all the haggling. It's all the, you know, coming from, you know, cultures over where Beirut is and everything else, it's expected to haggle. You know, it's expected to barter back and forth and to negotiate. You know, a lot of things that you don't see, or at least I can't, you know, in some of the other cards as being so crystal clear, you know, with this particular work card and everything that goes along with it. You know, because when you look at the souk, you know, and it comes up in a spread, you know, you may have to negotiate for that race. You know, you may have to barter or you may have to sell yourself. You know, there's so many different meanings that this one card takes on. Yeah, exactly. I can't find in just one other card, you know, I could do like five, six cards in a line. To get, but it may to get not the bar and stuff. Yeah, same, yeah, yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. And then it's it's the it's the one card that gives you the verb you need to work at it. Hey, Elizabeth Lindsay wanted to say hi. Um, she also wanted to say oh, hi no. to Erica too. <laughs> she says you are a wonderful teacher. She adores you to death. Oh, I love you. I love you, and I adore all of you too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Erica saying, yeah, it's kind of hard to pin. Uh, I'm sorry, pigeonhole your system into like a school um, because it has evolved. It has changed from the standard definition of a particular school of thought. Mm -hmm. And yes, 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 yes. And you know, right before I I remember I was like scared. I was like, I asked a lot of my friends that are in Europe. I'm like, look, I'm going to do this. Am I going to be, you know, crucified because I'm going to add four cards? And, you know, my friends, they're very well-known Lenormand reader. They're like, do what you want. You know, this is your deck. Do what you want. People will adapt. And if they don't want it, they don't use it. Because I was really scared because they were, you know, it was kind of like rough, you know. Um, if, if you know, like at the beginning, it was like, it's very, Lenormand was very, they, they, there's um, a certain close tight knit that it, it cannot veer from a certain thing. Right. 
But we evolve, and I'm sure they evolve. Like you know, we use cell phones, we use we, we everything evolves. And uh, but I do love the tradition. That doesn't mean I don't like the tradition. I still use the tradition. Um, I am very traditionalist, but evolved. I can't explain it to you, but I do both, and I love. Well, both. you take it. You take what you have learned from the traditional school of thought, and you elevate it to where you are spiritually. You know. I love traditional things. They don't always work for me because of the different way I see things because being very intuitive, you know, I work a lot of times outside of the box, you know, so even though I've learned, you know, a lot of techniques and a lot of practice in Lenormand, some of it doesn't always fit for me because Mm -hmm. it's not in my spiritual makeup. You know, mm-hmm. so I adapt whatever tradition or style I'm using to fit my spiritual frame, I'll call it, you know, mm-hmm. so that it works specifically with me. And when I look at your cards, that's what I also see is I see the tradition, I see the same images, but I see an elevated level of spirit, you know, with the different cards and being able to think outside the box. I love it. I love it. Thank you. This is amazing. This is this is amazing. And I think everybody, all the readers out there, everybody is is um I mean, rules are good and they're very important because sometimes you do get a blockage and you need to fall back on on everything you learn. But at the same time, we're talking about divination. I mean, we're talking about divination. It cannot um, I mean, Le Normand is amazing, is amazing in divination because of these rules and because it pulls you into the portal using those rules and your intuition together. But when you're st- when you're starting, you know, for everybody that's new, they need to stick to the rules. They need to stick to the one plus one equal to because um, this is how this system works. But going back to the to the to the market the market card, um, I got I got like. Uh, I love it because it came up, you know, one time for me to keep shopping around, you know, um, somebody called me, you know, they still like do in the Middle East, they still, they still have like these, um, um, how do you say, suitors to come. It's, it's still like some families still have that stuff, you know? Right. And then um, I had a client and she called me and, and then she's like, you know, is that guy, is that guy, should I take that guy or should I just wait or I don't know or, you know, and then I, when I got the market and the first thing that popped is like, yeah, you just, you need to keep shopping, you know, it, it's not the, this is not the guy, you know, I just felt like shop around kind of, kind of a feeling, you know, because but that's perfect with this card because that's really, <laughs> I know, I know. So I, um. I love them. I love my the, the extra card, and I use it a lot. But again, I want to keep saying that if you are wanna 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 play with the strict uh, le normal, please, please, please do this, do so, and don't use the cards. It, it's okay. Um, those cards are just extra. That's why I didn't put any suits. That's why I didn't put anything. I kept nothing on them. I didn't put any inset in them. I didn't do anything because I really wanted them to be extra. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I wanted you to feel that these are extra cards. They're not part of Le Normand. Right. And that's why when I put this show together, I made sure to also say it was also about the extra cards. Because I know that they're additional. I know that they are meant for every person to feel each card and find out, well, do I want to use that or do not want to use that? And how can I use that? You know, I love the finding your own meaning in the extra cards. Yes. Like the bedroom card. The bedroom card. I love the bedroom card. That was another one. So, that was another my, one. Or as my post the other and, day. Um, they would, <laughs> I remember having a fight about the lilies and the lilies is sex. I can't, for the life of me, I just cannot see it because I was brought up when, and, and emerged in the French history and, and a Franciscan with the Franciscan nuns. And because I was brought up with that, 
um, it is for me the lilies is all about purity and the Virgin Mary and the, and and it's it, the lily it cannot it, it just cannot be about sex you know what I mean it talks about wisdom it talks about royalty with the fleur de lis on everybody's crescent on all these royals you know it, it's about status it's about um, gaining status it's about taking the time to get to the status it's about be, be, knighting becoming a knight and getting the fleur de lis the lily is like so important so because this is it has such a strong symbology to me i just i I just couldn't see that as sex i just couldn't i couldn't so um the whip was perfect to be you know the whip yes obviously but marquis decide that's all i have to tell you you know um there's so many other things and in the old um thanks to mary greer the fabulous historian she found out that actually there was always a whip in 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 all these these really old 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 cards and the the whip was used as sex and also robert place found um a lot of very old um cards a lot older than lenore using the whip as sex so and it makes it just makes sense from all the cards to use the whip as sex um because it's about, it talks about repetition it talks about you know it's like writing and cleaning and working out and you know it's the same kind of you know kind of you know, i didn't mean over, to do yeah. that i was not <laughs> you know but you know what i mean but it's the same kind of um uh energy you know what i mean yes you know, so this is why i used it but the whole time I'm using it, you know, it's just like in a relationship, it's like mm, sometimes, okay, so most of, you know, most of the time we are diviners and we feel and we know exactly and under the context, we know exactly what is what is going on. But sometimes you are like, if you're not seeing, you'll be like, are they going to fight or are they going to have sex or are they going to have a... um a fight during the sex. So it was, it's just sometimes, sometimes very rarely this happens. Um, you know, like, and I would like have to choose, um, what, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have a sex card and be done with this. And, you know, I know I'm going to be crucified and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to have it. And if you want to use it, be my guest. If not use the Lily, use the anchor, use whatever you want to use. But as long as you're divining and it's, you're doing a wonderful job and you love it and it's working with you, use it. And uh, you know, I love the bedroom card because for me, it's more than just sex. Yeah. It's relationship. It's love. It's the cuddling yes. moments. It's that wooing that you have for the enticing of your lover, you know, to draw them in. It's the sensual parts, you know, the, the little things that say, hey, maybe you need to bring a little bit more sensuality into your relationship. Maybe you're not paying enough attention to yes, this Yes, this is the context. Person. This is where the context comes in. It's all about yeah. intimacy. I, I, you know, this, the, 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 the easy, the comfortable, you know, um, it, it's all about the context. You know, and so, and you know, because I've chatted with you periodically about your extra cards. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I get a lot of the meanings and I see a lot of the extra nuances that the cards bring, you know, because like a relationship, even sex, you know, it's all a dance. It's all, you know, like you're out on the dance floor and one person's leading and one person's following and you're moving in rhythm and you're working together in harmony, but you still have that very close, intimate connection. Yeah. And depending on the cards, maybe you don't have that and that's what you need. You know, exactly. so, I mean, when people are looking at these, you know, whether they use them or whether they don't, you know, Bring to your mind all the thoughts about what these particular cards bring, you know, in your mind. What do you know about them? What happens, you know, in the relationship? What happens in the bedroom? And I'm not talking just always about the physical. Exactly. Sometimes it's just, you know, um, it, it somebody can come up with it like it's an escape, you know, for them just to go and sit in bed and just like, you know, uh, Erica or, or said, having their own private <laughs> private area. I mean, it could be so many things. Erica just said can also just need or could also indicate a need just for actual rest. You know, exactly. Time out. 
exactly you know, just relax <laughs> um you know put your body just just sleep you know rest and and you have to i personally love the extra cards and i always use them and Thank you too. also have like a lot of newer decks that are out now you also have two male two female you know for same sex couples yes do you if you want to use out? them and I mean, if you don't i actually Still use the original, like I don't, I don't need them, but a lot of people do. So that's why, I mean, it, do you, you know what I mean? Sometimes I use all of them for different characters. If I'm doing a GT when I have a lot of characters in it, yep. I might, you, I might add it to use different characters if I need more characters. But I usually, um, I mean, I usually stick to the, what I used to use before this was added. Um, I would use like, you know, um, either the horse or, I mean, I, or I can just use, you know, the male and the female, um, and just put one for each. But if, if I feel like they're not comfortable, then I would use it. Do you, you know what I mean? Yes. And I use, I leave both men and women in the car, in the deck the whole time. Um, yeah. only for, you know, spreads where I might be doing like a nine card or larger where, I want to see if one, any of the people cards pop up Mm -hmm. and if it's a relationship reading, if more than one of the people card pops up of the same sex. Yes, I do that too. I do that too. (laughs) Oh, I want to give a little trick just before. So I leave all the cards too. And because I leave all the cards, because, because, of, because I do what you do. All right. So I leave all the cards too. And because at the same time I do the, the, the regular, um, the regular, I do the regular reading grand, grand tableau. I don't use the same, uh, the, I, I don't do that unless, you know, I feel I need to. So this is, this is a little, a little tip because if you leave all the cards in, as soon as you start the grand tableau, when you're putting the cards down, Always like the first card that pops in, like, let's say you got the vintage Dior lady that pops in. So you stick to that and you take out while you're doing the cards, you take out the other out. Um, like you, you just wait for her mate kind of thing, you know, so it's the same theme. And then you take the other card if you want to stick to the same, like, um, man and woman. So this is what I do. I don't like, I don't, because I don't like taking things out, putting things in, taking things out, putting, th- I'm, I'm just lazy that way. I just like <laughs> to keep everything because I do what you do. I'm the same way, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I like the additional influence. You know, I have had times where I've done readings for people where, you know, Oh, well, you know, I kind of think my boyfriend is cheating on me and I'll shuffle and I'll, you know, throw out a nine card and lo and behold, here's a man and here's both women. And, yep. you know, the cards around are saying, okay, there's another influence, there's another person involved, you know, they seem to be looking at each other depending on how they land. And then yep. I'll start by reading the cards and say, okay, now this is what I see going on. You know, so although you can find that with other cards, for me, it's like that slap in the face. It's an extra nudge. It's like an extra nudge. Yes. You know. Yep. I do the same exact thing. This is I. I, I exactly. You know, Linda Schumacher said yesterday she pulled the bed in a timing question, and it literally meant overnight. <laughs> and did it happen? Um. Yeah, she said it literally. It meant overnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. That is you know, so cool. I need to write that down. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, because it is an overnight card, you know. It's yep. not a long term, you know, it, just like relationships and with sex or anything else. You know, these are things that are spontaneous, small. They happen quickly. They don't take up, you know, as far as timing, it's not a long timed for the card you know Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you don't woo somebody you know for eons well maybe some people do but we call them stalkers Um, (laughs) (laughs) but you know it's like the the peck on the cheek it's like the nudge it's like the cuddle on the couch you know it's beautiful when it lasts but it doesn't last a long time yeah you know and it's something we always work on you know, what do you think oh, is uh-huh. one of the biggest things that a new Lenormand reader 
you know, who is somebody who's just coming into this should know or needs to learn, you know, to become a good reader? To become a good reader, practice is the only practice and context, these two. That's that's basically where it boils down it boils down to this. If you don't practice enough and if you think you're gonna become a reader just by, you know, playing around here and there, that's not gonna work. You need to you need a lot of practice for your cards to sink. It's like any other um, uh, if you're trying to do bodybuilding, you're not gonna go and, you know, go like once a month and, and, and then you think you're gonna build and have the six pack and everything. No, you need to actually work at it. You need to, it's a process. And that process, you know, you, you always also, also, you always need to keep, keep that practice. Even, um, you know how you, you get to a point, but then at the end, you don't need to do it every day. You have to just maintain it. Yes. So it's very important that you maintain, like, let's say you stopped and you're a very good little more reader and you're amazing and you stop for like five years. When you start again, you're going to need a little time. I mean, yes, you are, you're going to, it's like riding a bicycle, but it's like that five minutes before you ride that bicycle again. So you, you're just going to need that again to like, you know, oil it again and, and start again. So it's like any muscle. So practice, practice, practice is very important. But I wanted I wanted to talk a little bit about the four extra card and description under description. I don't know if I talked about that before. Um, but if you're describing somebody like, for example, in the bet card, you know, so that would be like for me, you know, an easygoing, a very mellow person. Uh, somebody that's totally relaxed. And if you want to describe them, like, you know, it, it could be also like a full body, but not very stocky. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Because I, I have a lot of people like doing description and they actually, um, they, they love, they love the Lenormand but because of doing those, uh, those description kind of thing. <laughs> so, and the I incense burner, um, you'll find somebody like very patient and tolerant and a good nature. Um, the instant burner is a very, it's a, it's a low maintenance person. The market, the souk is a high maintenance person. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to laugh because when I sit there and I think about personal characteristics of the marketplace, that's the first thing I think of. It's like, yep. mom needs a new pair of shoes. No, no, not those. We want the expensive ones. <laughs> yep, not those, not those. Okay, let, me, let me see if there's another one over there. Okay, no, let me see over there. No, you know what? I think I'm going to go back to that one. That's a very high maintenance person. <laughs> it's not very easy. It's not like that. So um, what else? Let me, I'm trying to remember who else, what else. So so these are kind of like, I want people like to, to think of um, these descriptions. What else can we, can we see that sense burner, you know, low maintenance is going, um, somebody that you can like right away, you know, those people that you click right away with. So yes. this is like that incense burner type of person. Do you know what I mean? Like, Oh my God, I've known that. I, I feel like I know you. Um, they're usually like calm. This is what I've been noticing. And what about spirit? Ha 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 ha. I, I, I mm. see priest. I well doing description in that one I, I I try like not to do the description in the in the spirit um I mean this one I want you know it's up to you it's it's, it's up to you. this one I'm not gonna tell you what I you know for me it's very personal like if I'm trying to see it could be like um somebody that is um See, the first time that I actually did that and the spirit card comes up, for me, it was more of a message that this person is very important and it is sent by spirit. Like it is, it's, 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 it's. It's important. Like, <laughs> like it, it's the card that tells you this is important. Okay. The description is coming next. Okay. So it's Does that precursor. make sense? So it's a precursor to... What yes, the yes. I don't. Is and to pay I don't want to describe it like, oh, you're spiritual. You're da 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 da. No, no, no. Because the spiritual can go both ways. You can be like evil, bad spiritual. You could be, but you know, I don't want to put unless you know uh, you work with it and you come up with your own. Um, um, yeah, like you see it a lot happening. So this is what your brain wants, want it to be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yes. Um, and because it's a spirit card, I really don't want to put anything in anybody's brain. I want it to be very, very personal card. Well, I can certainly understand that. You know, I, like I said, for me, I look at it. Sometimes I see priest, but I also see divinities. You know, I mean, there's so many. But, you know, I also have a... But that's other work, if you see priest, you know? Right, you know, and I'm also a priest. That's one of the reasons why. Uh Aha, so you identify with it. Exactly. You know, so being in a spiritual tradition, you know, actually several, but being a priest in one, you know, certain cards take on a particular role for me because of that. You know, where most people aren't going to see that because, you know... Traditions that I work in, you know, are a little bit different. You know, we pull upon different things, ancestors, you know, guides, you know, particular actual spirits, you know, of our traditions. So when I look at it, it has very deep special meanings from that background. See, here you go. I love that. You see how you see how it works for you, but this is not going to be it's not going to work for somebody else the same way. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, and that's, you know, that's why I wanted you to come out and talk about them because, like I said, I look at all the nuances, so I see a lot in the cards, the history, you know, where you've come from, where the cards pull from, you know, and I've seen different Facebook discussions, you know, on the extra cards, and uh-huh. sometimes people don't always get them, Um you know, and that could be because, you know, they're so used to the strict Lenormand, mm-hmm. you know, traditions, you know, mm-hmm. but I myself find them very valuable in my deck. And I've never questioned once from the moment I started looking at them, having them in my deck or out of my deck. They're always been, you know, from day one. Thank you. Thank you. I felt that it needed to be there. Especially the the spirit and the incense burner. I from day one, I've always dreamt about it since I was sixteen. That I needed those cards. I always needed it. And you know, when I had the opportunity, it's like I'm gonna make my deck. This is the first. Oh my god, the first thing I want to do is do this. But oh my god, I think I'm gonna. They're gonna kill me. Tomatoes are gonna be coming left and right. <laughs> so, um, but for me, for my work and what I do, and and and. Um, I really needed. I needed it. It helps me in my work. It really helps. Um, I mean, everything you can read with everything, but with with the Lenormand, I just I I love Lenormand because it's so specific, and I wanted that extra specific to that extra world. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yes. not there. I know so, that Elizabeth in the group, Elizabeth Lindsay, said that she loves the extra cards. And Rana's generously shared her descriptions with her when she was taking your class, even though it wasn't actually covered <laughs> in the classes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Is she using them? Well, let's see. I'm assuming she is, since she said that... Uh, you know, you went over the descriptions and everything with her while she was taking your class. Um, covered. Yeah, I, I, I try. If, and when anybody asks me, I try to give them um, all the information I can when I can. Um, I'm not, you know me, I'm not, um, if, if I'm reachable, I'm available. Um, when I can, I answer anybody and everybody as soon as I'm able to. Um, I do sometimes get a lot and sometimes messages get shuffled and get buried under a lot of messages. So I don't see it. Um, so if, if you do ask me and send me something and if I don't answer you within, um, you know, a few days, please don't hesitate to send it again. I have no problem answering anybody and everybody. It's just sometimes I really honestly don't see it. And Lindsay said, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In big bold capital letters. You know. That's awesome. So because Linda I, Schumacher was going to actually ask the next question I was yeah. going to. Yes. Tell me. What's coming down the pipe? What's next for Rana George? Uh-huh. <laughs> I have a few things I'm working on. It's still in the in the in the in the hidden working area in the, in the dark room. How is it? It's called. Yes. So, 
as soon as uh, you get the go yeah, ahead, <laughs> you get you guys are gonna you guys are gonna hear about some stuff. So I have a few things I'm working on. Um, Something le normal, something is not le normal. So you'll see it's coming. I have actually, I have more than more than a few things that I'm working on. Um, I also, you know, a few classes I'm going to work on. There's something also le normal and something that is totally not le normal. People are going to be like blown away when I'm going to teach. They're going to be like, whoa, you know that? So I haven't talked about it before. <laughs> I won't so. push. No. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you know, yeah, I've known so some I have things that. have been coming, and then, you know. And then I'm super excited that I'm going to be presenting at the Reader Studio next year. So that's on Divination Day. Um, so that's 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 really exciting. Um, so there's there's a there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff coming up. I am so happy to hear that, and you'll have to keep me posted so that I can give shout outs plug you on the radio, you know, let my audience know when things are coming, you know, how things are developing, what's new coming up, because, you know, I want them to also be able to get all the information, you know. Definitely, definitely, definitely. As soon as like one thing, because it's everything, everything is still like in the, in the, in the pot right now. As soon as I start pulling them one today after the other, you'll, uh, You'll, so are, you'll hear about it. <laughs> are you going to be coming back to Northwest Tarot Symposium? Linda wants to know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on next. Um, I have I have a lot. Like my 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 plate is full, so I don't know if I'm coming back to Newts next uh, next year. I'm going to be at Reader Studio. That's definite. I'm going to be also in. Um, Chicago at the end of this year, I'm going, not before, like the end of the summer, I'm going to be, <sighs> whoa, there's, there's, um, there's a few things that, that are, that are coming up. So you'll, you'll see it. I'll post about it and you'll see it. But, um, and I'm, Aaron's and there's a few things year. online that I'm working on too. And there's a few items, um, that I'm working on. Got a lot going on in the fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's Karen's good. hoping it's, to get to new next it's all year about as well. Divination and taking you to the next level because that's what I want. I want I want everybody to really go to the next level, not to be tied down to one thing and just to use this as a as it's just a portal because you guys are the magic. You guys are the magic, and these are just paper. They're just object. They're just it's like the phone. It's like anything you use is just a tool that you're using. And I just want to, I want, I want everybody to just take, you know, go to the next level. Okay. So what's next? Now I can read Lenormand. more. Now I can do this. Now what else can I do? Do right. you know what I mean? Like, it, how can I help my client? Process. Always learning. You're always lifting. You're always wanting people to do better. And you don't want people to stand still, you know, or stay stagnant. Exactly, because you get stuck if you're like that. You get stuck in the same thing, and and then your reading, you can see your reading will start becoming stale. You you trust me, you will see that. And and I agree. It's one of the reasons why you know I love everything in divination, whether it's you know even though I still have issues with tarot, but you know whether it's Lenormand, whether it's tea cards, whether it's soul cards, bones, pasta. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anything. It, Anything. It's all, you know, it's all a form of symbolic divination. And it all works in different ways. And the more you work it, the more styles you learn, the more you open. Exactly. Exactly. So how and the I... more you open, the more you get more messages and the more the more you can actually help your life, you can help the people around you and you can help your pli- your client yes. by just knowing you'll have that there's something, the, the more you do that, you'll have this, this knowing thing. Like, let's say somebody's going through a huge problem, but they have, an, you'll, you'll have like, you, don't, you wouldn't need card anymore. You'll have a knowing, um, a feeling like, oh, I know everything. I know it's hard right now, but I know everything is going to be fine. I know it's going to work out somehow. It's, an, it's like something inside or, or you'll have a feeling like, oh, I need to do something. It, it, everything is connected. And, and the more you practice, the more you do this, the more you expand yourself, you will see yourself getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I agree. Which brings me to one last question. 
Mm-hmm. And I get slapped for this every once in a while because, you know, I have a particular stance on a reader and a diviner. Mm-hmm. What separates the two? You know, and I always say that if you are not connecting with whether it's your ancestors, your guides, your spirits, you know, while you are doing your readings, you know, it's really not full on divination. It's you have to have a connection spiritually with whatever spirits, ancestors, guides, or whatever it is that you work with you know, to help develop that communication between the worlds. What are your thoughts? Okay, so you're right. There you're 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 it, it, yes, you're right, but okay, no but and and I believe that actually well first of all we don't live alone. Nobody lives alone. Okay. So there's you have to know that you're never alone. And there's always these spirit there's always these things around you. Now, you for me reader and the diviner is the same thing. The reason why you get a client, the client is sitting next to you and you're doing a reading. The message you're gonna give that person that's sitting in front of you, you're gonna see that message. Any way you see it, if you're divining, if you're, you know, reading it, if you whatever, that message is coming through somehow. And then that message is going, you know, that person came to you to hear that message. And nothing, there is no chance, there is no coincidence, there is none of that. If you have been reading and, like you said, just a reader and doesn't use spirit and everything, you think you're not using spirit, but you, no, you are every time. You're always using spirits when you're divining. You're always using everything, even though you think you're not doing anything. I have a lot of people saying, no, I don't, I don't use spirits. I don't use anything. It's just me. It's just me and the cards. It's just me and my brain and the card. No, you are very, very wrong. They actually, you get in your head these visions. You get in your head things that connect together and sometimes you think it's you but it's really not you you really think it's you but things will pop in your head things will you know connect but it's really not you so we are always connected number one number two even if you're not using it um if you're not talking to spirit and everything you are still talking not unconsciously and um I mean, this is, this is, this is not a black and white world and it cannot be like, oh my God, because the, um, because I saw these two cars together, it can only mean this. This is, it doesn't work that way it's because you are a practitioner. So you're connected, period. Well said. You know, and I, I look at that, and like I said, I get slapped sometimes because I bring this topic up, but I find it's a very important topic, you know, for anybody that wants to be a diviner. And then, yeah, I mean, if you want more, you go you go to the more the, the route of that. But a lot of people, they're, they're, some people cannot handle it. Some people are scared. Some people, they just don't want to deal with that extra thing. So they actually think that they're not dealing with it, but they are. But they are, and... um when you open anything and you want to think about something, you're, you're actually, your guides talk to you all the time. The universe is always talking to you. You don't see it, but it's always talking to you. Something is always talking to you. Always, always. And then you get ideas and then you get, you know, how do you think all that stuff? We're all connected to, to some sort of a network thing that, you know, we get like, the, there's a, how do you, I'm seeing these, zzz, 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 you know, those, those <laughs> little, um, uh, wires that are all connected, you know, like electronically and stuff like that. It's, it's always, everything's always talking to you. You're not, a separate entity living all by yourself that doesn't exist not in this world um it, it's like writers you know they go they, they you have so many writers thinking oh you know i'm just you know i just wrote this it came to my mind no they actually went to the sphere that has all these ideas and that's why you see so many people doing for example the same uh movie or the same subject or right now there's a big subject that everybody is talking about because 
something the spirit world wants us to be more aware of, which is the the ancestor and the mediumship and the and the, um, and the other lives uh, and the multiple lives and all that kind of stuff. So this is coming out like stronger and stronger and stronger. And you can see it in movies, you can see it in books, you can see it in in classes, you can see it in readings. Um, like a small example, I did a class on that in um, in in um, in Newt's, right? I, I did a class. I, I did a class on on um, multiple lives and how you can heal through that and all that kind of stuff using Lenormand. And um, and in Reader Studio, there was another class like that. It's amazing. It's using. It's the same, but using the science behind it. And and the fabulous, you know, Benaval did it. And, and I was just like, I was talking to her. I was like, it's amazing. Something wants to come out, you know. And she's been, like, working on that, like, over a year more than me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I haven't talked to her. She hasn't talked to me. We don't know, you know, but we're both working on the same thing. It's like, um, we're, you're always connected. You are always connected, you know. Even if you think you are so scientific and so, you know, um, non-spiritual, you are connected. Yes. You know, and I see a lot of those as also messages to remember where you come from, you know, remember the people that came before you, you know, honor your ancestors because, you know, they are who make you up. You know, they're who make you you. You know, how would our wonderful audience be able to get a hold of you should they want to, you know, find out information about classes or get a reading from you? Um, how do they go about getting in touch with you? Um, I am um, always available. A lot of everybody can, you know, catch me on Facebook, Rana George, uh, on Instagram, Rana George One, on Snapchat, Rana George One. I'm on YouTube, Rana George, and I'm everywhere, Rana George dot com. So you there's plenty of way to contact me and plenty of way to find out um, what's coming next. And and um, so I'm really very very accessible. I know. And you know, I've loved you for years. Thank you. Thank you. I can't that's, lie. That's, a, that's an honor. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know. Um, so as we wrap up, you know, I want to thank all of our wonderful listeners for tuning in and all of our wonderful guests that joined in. You know, I also want people to, you know, remember that uh, the Divination Table also has its own website. Uh, the divination table dot com where you can find a list of up and coming shows who our guests are going to be um, as well as a contact the reader page where I add in all of our wonderful beautiful guests their contact info so that you can come and you can actually go right to the site click on contact a reader and scroll through to find the one that you're looking for um, and find all their contact info as well as you can actually listen to our shows and archive directly off the show as well as on YouTube um, underneath the divination table at gmail.com so you can find us there as well Um, is there anything you'd like to share with the audience um yes divine 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 always divine and always uh, um, look at the world without any Walls. Look at the world with no walls. You know, I like that because, you know, a lot of times we put up so many different walls that we kind of get stuck. Yes. And we can't see past, you know, don't look through, you know, we just look at the surface instead of what's beyond. Yes. Exactly. I, I, I see that a lot. And this is why I, I want to, I want, you know, everybody to really like, um, like do it from the heart and 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 just divide and just make sure while you do the reading you know just to get back to the to the practical when you're doing the reading just make sure to take yourself out all the time and not think this is like very important yes i will agree with that 100 percent. and with that would you like to say our final goodbyes to our beautiful and wonderful listeners I want to say, first of all, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. I love it. I, I it, It's been amazing knowing you and seeing um, all your work that you're doing. And uh, so thank you for having me. And I want to tell everybody, thank you so much for all the love and the support. It means the world to me. Each and every message I get 
it, it really touches me. You know, no matter how many I get, I answer each and I, it really touches me. And um, it, it means the world to me. And I really, really, really thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed to have you all. And I really love you. I call you like um, the army of, 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 of the future, the, of the future of divination, of the divination world. And I, I just love it because thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a million times. And don't forget to tune in to us next week again, Thursday, 7 p.m. on the Divination Table, and we will see you then. God bless. Okay. Bye.